When I got my 2080 Ti, it was the fastest gun in the West. No other card could touch it. But all gunslingers get old and now a new generation wants to take the crown away. Can the fastest of the old generation compete with the slowest of the new? I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar and we're going to find out in this one-on-one -on -one match. This is a big ass card. Saying what you will about PC gaming being expensive, but this card right here represents the attempts of developers to democratize PC gaming so that the regular PC gamer can sell less of their body parts. PC gaming will still be more expensive than console gaming, but because of the 3000 line and the 3070 in particular, like the one Asus sent us over, it will be dramatically cheaper. And let's admit it, PC is the master race. Bite me! I have reviewed the Asus TUF RTX 3070 for a month now and compared it with the performance of my RTX 2080 Ti. And I am so thankful Enemy that movement. I bought the latter a year and a half ago and not just before the release of the 3070 because my soul would have been crushed if I had. Overall, the performance between the two are very similar but the costs are galaxies away from each other. I bought my 2080 Ti for 67,380 and the Asus Tough 3070 locally retails for around the 31 to 35,000 peso region, thus making the 3070 close to 100% cheaper than the 2080 Ti when it first came out. Even if you aren't buying any of the NVIDIA 3000 GPUs, that just makes all the cards before it, theoretically, a lot cheaper. Of course, it is normal for old tech to become cheaper, but what we want to emphasize is that it is not just cheaper, but dramatically cheaper. We're talking about prices which will cascade down throughout all graphics cards, eventually. We did a head-to-head -head game comparison between the two cards. We tried it on two monster games, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Red Redemption 2. This is the heartlands we're going to. And one oldish but still highly competitive game. Rainbow here, Six here. Siege. Here, right in front, right, right, there, right there, right there. There we go. There we go. For the review process, I installed MSI Afterburner so we could compare real-time frame rates and check for bottlenecking. Bottlenecking occurs when you see the CPU at 100% while the GPU remains below 100. You definitely won't see that happen here with my test no unit, but I thought it'd be nice to mention it for yourself just in case you wanted to check for your own rig. The two most important criteria for a graphics card is number one, how high can you turn up the graphics? And number two, what frame rates can you achieve with those maxed out graphics? To keep things simple, I maxed out the graphics in all our test games and so the footage you see here is everything on Ultra. But enough talk, let's shoot some people! Get the hell out of there right now! How about I blow your lance? I have gamed on 60 FPS my entire life. Even when I got an RTX 2080 Ti, I didn't feel the need to change my monitor because it felt epic to game on 34 inch ultra wide 4K. However, for purposes of this review, I was forced to borrow a monitor from the shop in order to properly check it. This entire month therefore is me experiencing high refresh rates for the first time in my life and it was eye opening. If you want to be an average Warzone player, then you absolutely must get at least 60 frames per second. However, if you want to be even remotely competitive, you need to be averaging between 90 to 100 frames. The 3070 will most definitely give you a phenomenal gaming experience which will future-proof your setup for at least 3 years. 
After that, you may need to lower future games down to medium settings. I know, cringe. In COD, it is important to distinguish between the frame rates in Warzone and the frame rates in the campaign and the smaller multiplayer matches. This is because Warzone requires a huge amount of power because of the sheer size of map and detail that it needs to render. But check out the frame rates when I jump out of the plane on both cards. On the 3070, I was pushing between 100 to 113 frames per second when I jumped out of the plane in Warzone. On the 2080 Ti, it was more like between 110 to 120 frames per second. For the competitive gamer, even a boost of 10 frames will make a huge difference. For the semi-competitive and casual gamer though, you will hardly notice it. Walking and engaging in Warzone. On the 3070, we were pushing around 85 to 110 frames. To be honest, I couldn't tell by feel the differences between the two games during actual play, but only noticed it when I compared video footage between the two side by side. On the 2080 Ti, we were pushing 95 to 120 frames. Duel. When it is just a duel match of four players or a gulag one versus one, we saw drastically different frames. The 3070 gave me frames of 110 to 155 and was usually within the 120 range and above. The 2080 Ti was pushing anywhere between 110 to 145. Most of the time, the 2080 Ti was within the 130 range and above when it came to these small skirmishes. What? On the 3070, we were pushing an average of 130 frames per second, hitting a low of 105 and a higher of 157. Let me check. I've been spotted. He's fucking blocking the way. On the 2080 Ti though, I was getting crazy frames. Something like an average of 150 and pushing to even 200. I don't exactly know how that is even possible since my monitor is capped at 160 frames. But that's what MSI Afterburner was saying and this is actually an MSI monitor as well. What I can say however is that this was otherworldly smooth. It was most definitely a far cry from the Call of Duty smoothness I was using the two cards on. However, to keep things fair, I repeat that we focus on maxing out graphics on all our test games. So all the frames you were seeing are based purely on what happens when graphics are maxed out. We brought both cards to their knees with Red Dead Redemption 2. On the Asus Tough 3070 with maxed out graphics, we were fluctuating from 45 to 70 frames. I could have probably got it up higher if I lowered the graphics a little, but I stuck by our ultra graphics rule for purposes of consistency. Red Dead is also a game I would classify as cinematic gaming, which to me means you are meant to be wowed with how lifelike the world looks and feels. You don't need to worry about any competitive edge if you are just fighting the AI, but you may want to bring out your higher refresh rates if you plan to go online. You have to help me. Help someone. Why are you telling lies about me? No. Allow me now to wrap up by highlighting one crucial difference between my Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti and the Asus Tough 3070, which I think is the deciding factor. And that is how cool the Asus Tough is. Quite literally, the Asus Tough 3070 was always close to 10 degrees Celsius lower 
than that of my Gigabyte RTX 20 Ti, regardless of which game I played. My room, while it has a lot of ventilation, also gets a lot of heat because of the sun which comes in through the glass walls and I hardly use air conditioning. As I and most of our subscribers are from the Philippines, we are all too familiar on how every degree matters because it is hot all year round. A lot of viewers rank the Asus Tough model of the 3070 to be within the top 10 list among the 40 or so other variants. Other reviewers recorded that the Asus Tough model averaged temperatures of 60 to 65 degrees Celsius when used in-game, which is consistent with what we were seeing in all three games during our review. Some of the other variants, such as the Palette Jetstream, Zotac Twin Edge, and Gigabyte OC Quiet BIOS version of the 3070, pushed an average of 70 degrees. I surmise that the three fan variants like the Asus Tough help a great deal with heat dissipation, unlike the two fan variants. Got a vendor here if you need supplies. In conclusion, the Asus Tough RTX 3070 gets an approval rating from us of 9 out of 10 for granting its user an affordable entry into ultra graphics gaming on PC. Again, a person needed to spend double the price just half a year ago in order to get similar graphics. Not only that, but the card delivers almost the same level of graphics as that of an RTX 2080 Ti and is cooler by an average of 10 degrees Celsius from that of my MSI RTX 2080 Ti. In short, if you are shopping for an RTX 3070, the usual rule as of the moment is to get whatever is available and which feels like a good price. Secondly, consider the Asus Tough RTX 3070 as one of the best options between the other versions of the 3070. I'll leave a link to the comparisons of each 3070 model in the description below. Are you going RTX or AMD on your next graphics card? Let us know in the comment section below so we know what to stock up on more at the shop. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps us out a ton. And if you didn't, then let us know how we can improve. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's everyone.